Yeah, where are you at, buddy? I know he's here. He's lurking in the shadows. <laughs> Calling all nutless monkeys. <laughs> where are you at, buddy? Let me pull up. Uh... Oops, hold on, guys. So this is going to be a good time, guys, while we bring Bow on right here. Um, is to, yep, take your time, buddy. Is, guys, send out some questions. What do you want to talk about today? Anybody on YouTube, do you have questions upon what it looks like getting started? Do you have questions about your trading? Do you have questions for me or Bow? Do you have questions for MIC? Also, guys, post in here, like, what you're looking for. Um, oh, sick. I love that. We'll talk about that, Alex. We'll talk about that in a sec. Definitely. Uh, what do you guys want to talk about today, man? What are some of the, um, I know we were going to talk about full MIC process, kind of like what that looks like. I showed you guys a little bit through the tutorial on starting with the watch list every single day, going into the main trading chat. And uh, here, let's see what Val's saying real quick. Hold on one sec. All right, one sec, buddy. Um, hold on, Val. One sec, guys, while we bring Bao on. Technical trader difficulties. <laughs> Dude, someone, someone on YouTube goes, Bow, talk about feng shui. Here's the thing you got to know about feng shui. There's power positions and pussy positions. So where you post your desk in your room is going to be a position of power where price action is going to be scared of you so, or something of some sort, <laughs> something like that. So we'll bring that one. All right, guys, Modern Rock is back. Let me see if I can bring him on. Val, you should be good now, buddy. All right, hear me? All right, yeah, what's up, man? Dude, nutless monkey, man, I can't figure this stuff out. Dude, are you kidding? I can barely speak right now, dude. I'm the nutless monkey, man. I sound like Darth Vader. Sounds good, brother. What's going on, man? Oh, my God, I'm still recovering from fucking L.A., dude. You almost killed me. What uh, <laughs> a birthday year. <laughs> dude, people don't realize that when Val has a birthday, bro, it's literally like a month long. It's not one day. <laughs> I don't have any years left, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well get the good ones while we still have you, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. What a fun time, though, man. Yeah, so um, January 29th is the meetup, guys. So hopefully you guys can attend. This is open to everybody, not just MIC, okay? Oh, yeah. If you'd like to bring a present for me, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I liked McKellen. I can, I can, I can tell you that. So, no, no alcohol, man. I'm trying hard. I am bring trying bring hard. him Wagyu. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> check this out. All you got to do is click this link, myinvestingclub.com slash meetup. And this is going to be all the details. It's going to be the locations. There's going to be hotels in the surrounding area that we also recommend. Uh, we're going to do it at a big park. So just uh, obviously with COVID guys, we don't want limited uh, or a limited space or small, you know, enclosements. Like we want to make sure that everyone's comfortable and everybody's in a space where we, and we can bring a lot of people because it'll be a lot of fun. We'll talk a lot of trading and hang out. It'll be cool, yep. man. Yep. yep. I don't yep. know if I've ever actually been to this park and I've lived in LA for like 26 years. Uh, you may want to bring a bulletproof vest. I heard LA is pretty uh, <laughs> crazy these days. <laughs> no, but that's why we're not doing it in LA, guys. This is actually in Culver City, which is 24 minutes from LA. Yeah, just 10 times more dangerous. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'm kidding. Bro, LA is like the purge right now. You got you got freaking like the police chief at LA County being like, don't come to LA. <laughs> Craig, hey, it's, it's still safer than not knowing how to trade and trying to trade. <laughs> That's exactly right, man. I'd rather get shipped in the thigh than lose, you know, a couple hundred grand trade. <laughs> Nothing like shorting low floats on the front side, right? 
Yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh, man. So, All right, so what's going on, guys? Uh, we talked a lot about, if you guys are in main chat already this morning, uh, we had some great plays, BFRI. Alex even annotated a chart for us, which is Here, awesome. I'll bring, I'll bring that up. One sec. Oops. Bring up, you know, so he, he de-traded that quite well. He waited for um, – I had a little FOMO, but I had a great average, so it was okay. So Alex and I's average is about the same, but his was less, his was less stressful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys see that in the beginning of what he was talking about with this kind of like triple chop action and then this major stuff. It's going to look a little different, guys, on a three-minute chart. Um, versus a one minute, which Alex was using, but but he's basically talking about right here of what happened and uh, and look at the volume. So he always talks about like, I'll just read it actually. Um, not only was it a triple top, it was a stuff candle. You can short risking the previous high of this candle, right? Where he's shorting uh, previous resistance becomes support. And you can look at the bottom and really, you know, flush this out on what he kind of made famous a, like a million years ago. And I, when I was learning from Alex seven years ago, and he didn't even know who I was as a Twitter follower, but this is what he always talked about is the stuff on the volume candle. You can clearly see the stuff coming. So this is kind of Alex's claim to fame right there, man. And then, uh, Val, I see you got a little FOMO there, buddy. <laughs> That's because I made money on the first trade. And so I started back at the same line as the first trade. You know this? Yep, 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 I, right here. I was adding very small. So it just looks kind of Christmas-like, but I was adding, yeah, my average was 751 on a decent size, so. Oh, that's good, man. That's good. And I liked how you covered immediately and then just piecemealed out every like. Right. So I, what I like to do is when, I mean, obviously I, I, I would like to enter higher, but um, I started small. So my average is pretty much okay. Like Alex's average. So Alex is the safe way to do, which, which I should. The, the thing with this is if you take a look at the three day chart on it. Yep. Yeah. So here are five. So guys, this is, this is day one day two yeah, yeah. so i wasn't really concerned dude i was pretty much the concern is if it broke <laughs> if it broke fucking eight bucks and then went to 840 but i was okay yeah the chances of that happening about are pretty freaking slim man given these two previous days right. of price action I, 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 the problem with this for me was this is a reg show which means uh the you can only use the locates one time and so it can get pretty expensive to keep recycling. So that's why good thing it just went straight down because uh, recycling was gonna recycling is great if you have the shares and you can reuse the shares over and over. But it's not when you have to relocate them over and over, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, you guys also have to take note of that. You know, it's just not not just a normal short, right? So you have to you have to really know how to allocate shares, how to use them properly. I I yeah. found shares really cheap in the morning at. Half of a penny, 005. I took like 20,000 shares knowing that it was Red Show. Very so nice. knowing, knowing the stock before you locate is a huge advantage because then after that it became like four, four cents. So you imagine four cents on 20,000 shares, like $800 to locate, right? So yep. Yep. And I ended up paying only half a penny on each. Dude, and, and the thing that the thing that I think we should brush on, Bao, is like when people, you know, think like, oh, you know, how is mental tie into this? This is a perfect example, right? It's like this was definitely a safer trade. Like you said, you were more comfortable. But see, guys, that's the thing about this this game is like it doesn't even matter how much money you make on the first trade. If you make on the first trade, you could sometimes be overconfident for the next trade. And like Bao was saying, this was not a super risky play. So he was willing to start in and be down a little bit. But like you could have just waited for the confirmation if you are going in fresh, right? Val already had that previous win. So then he was going back in and that's the thing. Like, well, like, the thing also, the thing also is freaking the pumper kept on pumping it. Right. In my, in my opinion, this thing would never get past 713. Let me show you why. Here's a chart on BFRI. Oh, like too many secrets there. <laughs> I know so we always do, man. <laughs> See that, guys? Look at the pivot line on that. Yep. Yep. I see it. Right so that, there. That matches the day before and the day before that. Literally right there. Yep. Yep. So, so there, there's your clue, guys. This stock is a classic case of 
conforming conforms to the chart. So when a stock conforms to the chart like this, it's a very high probability trade. So I actually sized up. I think I had like 14, 15,000 shares. So. Yeah, about what you said with a 51 average, right? That's, that's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. Um, and then also what I was saying is guys is like, if Val has a little bit more confidence because he won in the first trade, you also have to know how much of a mental game is on the opposing side. So if you start the day, even if it's a hundred dollar loss, your mind is going to tell you, oh my God, I'm a loser already. And then you might be a little too shy or timid to actually execute when the right confirmation comes on the second trade. So that's where we say this game is actually quite simple, but it's that mental that gets you. You know, if you start the day and you're like, man, I only made 50 bucks on the first trade or only 300 bucks, you don't want to get too aggressive on the second and then vice versa. If you lose, then you get too scared and like a wimp when your perfect confirmation and setup comes right after just because you tested the water and did a starter that didn't work out correctly. So this is that mental part we're talking about, right? Correct. Correct. So Tosh hits it, hit the nail on the head there. All about confidence, guys. I mean, if you're on a losing streak, dude, everything just scares the shit out of you. And so when you're doing that, when you're on a losing streak, size down, size down, the point yeah. is not to make money, but to regain your confidence. Because, you know, you're, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I know my system works, but even I am afflict, afflicted with fear, right? When we start losing, we, we overthink. And then when you overthink, that's when all bad shit happens. And this is why I'm going to post this. I'm going to post this, guys, to, uh, the chat. Wait, hold on. I really read that because I think uh, I pulled this up today. I found this and it shows exactly what, what I did with this. I, when, when things are going great, you don't think, man, it's just natural, right? You know, like when someone throws a ball in your face, you don't have to think about dodging that ball. But when you're a child, the ball is going to hit in your head five times you, <laughs> until you realize I got to move my head. Yeah, seriously, or put the glove on. <laughs> Guys, so this is from Momo Traders. If you have not read this book, this is top five of the best books I've ever read as well. And Val has a chapter in this wonderful book. And it says, this was kind of the, the, the category of the questions. Some people say trading should be robotic, disciplined, and calm. Seem to the point in that direction. Now, this is Val's answer. I was a robot and it has to be a reflex. You have to get to the point where you don't think you just react. The market moves too quickly for you to second guess yourself. I compared it to being an athlete. They don't think, they react. Once trading becomes instinctual, all confidence problems are solved. You just act. That's a really, really good paragraph. And that was actually that was one of my favorites. The, the Bruce Lee quote, right? I'm gonna put, I'm, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna, there we go. Read that as well. I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that, that won't work. And then oh, oh, open it up the fear. I, fe I fear not the man. The oh, okay. That was bigger lettering. So I just went there first. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks or, or 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. That's the oh. repetition. That's the reflex. That, that is the kick, right? This is the instinctual, right? This is where he gets to the point where he just knows he's a badass with that one particular setup, that one. Like Alex's stuff moves. Stuff moves in first red day. Alex is so instinctual on there. Dude, like, like logic doesn't even apply anymore. He just knows the exact feeling and emotion to do when the time is right, right? Like he's so beyond logic at that point. Like when yeah. that stuff moves like, happens, he's ready. Like, like when you play any sport, you, you want to play golf, you go up and you swing. You don't think about all oh, you your butt, this, you move your wrist. And, you know, as a beginner, that's why you fail. As a beginner, I'm always thinking, okay, is my, my elbow right? Is my butt right? Is my ankle right? Right? <laughs> is your a butt right? What kind yeah. of golfing are you doing, bro? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Or, or like sex, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is the elbow in the right place? <laughs> Seriously. So that's what happens, man. You you do something over and over and over. This is why screen time is important. This is why experience is important. This is why you need to show up every day, guys. If you want to make trading work, show up, show up, show up. You can't just like golf, man. I can't, you can't just go once a week. You gotta go every oh, man. Day. Otherwise, you have your muscle memory. That's what it is, right? It's muscle memory. Well, and the, and the funniest thing about golf, Val, is I think, I think actually out of all of the sports, golf is probably the best analogy for trading possible because guys, I mean, I cannot tell you how many times over eight years I was on a heater, dude. I was, I, I hadn't had a ready for three months 
And then one day a play would come around just like you're having a perfect girlfriend and you shank one in the water and it literally ruins you the rest of the round. So I'd be green for three months. And then the next day, dude, I give that two months in one trade. And I'd be like, oh my God, I can't trade. It was all luck. I got lucky. I don't know shit. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a nutless monkey. Then once you go back to the drawing board and you go, oh, well, of course I lost. I broke my process. I yep. broke my golf process, whether it be grip, whether it be stance, like Val said, where's your butt place, then you shank it in the water. Of course you shanked in the water. You broke your process. That is correct. Dude, it's, it, it's just such a perfect analogy, man, because it's like you always have to treat every golf shot and every trade as if you didn't make a win before or you didn't make a loss. I'm just going to do what I know works. No emotion. What works? But, but before you get there, you're going to have to paper trade. You're going to have to learn. You have to keep doing it every day because, until it becomes instinctual. I can look at a chart and with high probability know whether or not it's going to go up or down. Definitely. If, if I cannot do that, I will not enter that trade. Yep. Yeah. I, and, and, and I'll just bring it one more time before we close the book on golf. But it's like, now it's like, imagine like going on a golf day where it's slightly rainy. It's windy, like 90 mile per hour winds. Dude, don't golf on that day. Go on a day where it's sunny with no, like it's waiting for the perfect setup, that's, right? That's, that's give you the best that's, odds. That's pretty much, you need to find a spot that conforms to the chart. Exactly, what means, dude. What that means is, does it do what you expect it to do? That if it does what you expect it to do, because technical analysis is charting, right? Then you can predict it. Then you can have with a high probability chance of success. But if it's so freaking random, don't trade that stock. If I start, if you start to lose, guys, and it does weird things that, that it should not do, do not get back on that stock. That stock does not conform anymore to the chart. Exactly. And, and about like, like Alex was talking a couple weeks ago back with size, it's like everybody just wants to go full size, whether it's a first red day, a channel trade, or even this trade in the morning. And it's like, dude, just like you have a whole golf bag of different golf clubs. Sometimes you push, sometimes you putt, sometimes you chip. It's the same thing. Not every trade is full size. you got to know the differentiating factors in the language of this that allows you to go, oh, okay, the conditions are perfect for a nice little scalp. Not a full-blown, let me go for the fences and then strike out right now or, you know, shoot it in the water. Like, we're professional athletes with our mind. And your finger clicking. So, and when Val, you know, gets old and gray, he said he'll use his toes. But <laughs> <laughs> if Val was in his deathbed in a coma, dude, he would figure out how to trade with his mind or with his toes, some form or another, dude. Yep. Take a look at the chart that I posted. Let's take a look at this. Does <laughs> that say bullshit wedgie? <laughs> Bullish okay. constant. This is shit that does not conform to the chart and it happens all the time, guys. Come on, expected to do. Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of these are supposed to just work, right? Yeah. When it got I mean, these, these are setups that people tell you to master and all this shit, but they never tell you what to do when they does not go your way. That's where risk management comes in. So you know. Maybe you can talk about risk management real quick. Well, talk. see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, guys. When you go over a random Instagram page or some service promoting this type of bullshit, th they're never accounting for the fact that like, yeah, of course, it, this should, quote unquote, should just keep going up. But what happens when you get a T12 offering motherfucker or when the pump dumps and you didn't know it was a pump or this is a failed breakout, you get the death candle stuff or, you know, this actually keeps squeezing shorts that were stuck. Like this is that you always have to plan accordingly. And that's where risk management comes in, this into play. So as Alex was saying, or Val was saying, like, let's use this for an example, right? If this stock would have broken, you know, what Val was shorting in the morning in 83840 level, dude, this is a three day resistance point that that should not break through. And there are traders that we know that would just keep adding and adding and try to bully this stock into submission that maybe by the grace of God, you get paid, but you develop really bad habits, but you're risking your entire future to do so. Rather saying, okay, if I'm going to scale this death candle up to the top of this death candle, I'll scale a stuff or I'll scale up to the 830 line because that'll break previous and even previous high a day on that major resistance point. I need to cut this motherfucker. I need to cut this stock or I'm not going to survive. Does that make sense? Like I'm passionate about this because you guys need to learn how to use stops. And if you don't, you're never going to make money. There's a sum zero game 
almost exclusively without stops. There's very few people like Val who did so many years of success without stop losses. It's very rare. It's, it, it's impossibly rare. Right, Val? Like, wouldn't you say? Say that again. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> he's, he's got porn up going on. Um, what I was saying is, be careful with this. Uh, what I was saying is, is it's almost an impossible career without stop losses and making it, you know, not a sum zero game. Because it's kind of a sum zero game without risk management and protection. It's, I mean, it's totally yeah, on a long enough timeline, something will get you. I, I, uh, uh, here's an example, guys. Um, there's a famous guy on Twitter. He trades big. He's bragging about being up 11 out of the past 13 days. But he doesn't talk about the two days that he loses that wipes away all those games. <laughs> that, yeah, that happens so frequently, man. That used to be me five years ago. God, oh, hey, that, I'm that, going for that, two that, months. That is, that's classic. Those win rates mean shit. You can be a, a 99% win rate. That one loss wipes out your whole career. That's yep. why you need risk management. That, that's I've, the, argued, I've argued with this guy about having stops and max daily loss. They don't believe in that. <laughs> they they don't yeah. think they'll ever lose. So, guys, I'm telling you right now, the secret, the secret, the secret is to never lose more than a few days of work. Yeah, I, I always say it's the it, absolute maximum. It's three days. But, dude, there's there's traders that argue it should only be one day. I just have a little bit more of a tolerance for risk, so I think it's three days. But that's more of a – like, dude, if you're losing a week in one trade, that's way too much. It's just way too much, man. And I used to lose months. Bro, I'd lose two months in one trade because what do you do? Hey, I, I'm three months green. I'm unstoppable. Add, 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 and then the hurricane wipes you out. That's like that's like a, 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 a like a, a captain of a ship going out to sea 99 times and saying this is an unsinkable fucking ship, and then boom, Titanic hits the iceberg on the 100th day he goes out to sea. You are never impervious to getting blown out of the water, but you are if you use stops and risk management. That's the point. But your ego will tell you, dude, you're you're too good. You're too good. This can't happen to you. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's the whole thing, man. Is you need to protect yourself, guys. So a uh, couple questions on YouTube, Val. Let's go over some of these. Um let's see, uh, let's see. Does MIC framework approach work for blue chips? Absolutely, dude. It works for have large cap. Joe Kelly does that. Yep. We have large cap webinars every, was it, every Tuesday? Is that Tuesday? Guys, large cap and options room right here. We have webinars at 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays at night uh, after Bao's Instagram live. So you have that in the morning for small caps and psychology. And then you have Joe's at night for um, options and big caps. And then, like I said, man, we have a whole room for this. So, and we have strategies on this. The first red day arguably works even better on big caps, you know, and blue chips versus maybe small caps. So like, like we have a lot of situations where you guys can do whatever you like. Um, let's see. Uh, can you touch on the mental part of holding while being down on a stock, not blowing up, but being patient while down a little bit and letting the trade work? It's a little bit confusing how you said that, Jimmy, on YouTube. But what I will say is when you pre-plan, brother, you're never scared as long as you're in the requirements of where you're you know, planning on scaling versus, hey, this looks like a short, let me get in and then just add, add, add. This is the thing. All this should have been planned before you got into the trade. Exactly. This is part of the planning of the trade, right? You have to know where you're going to enter and where you're going to exit from both a win and a loss before you get in. Yeah. You should, you're not making this shit on the fly. You're, you're, you, you, most of you guys are just have no clue what to do because you have not planned it. If you plan it properly, why are you? Why are there questions during the trade? You're supposed to do all of your your due diligence and your research and planning before you end the trade. Actually, Val, that's a really good way to say it. I don't know if we've ever worded it like that. If you ever have a single question while you're in the trade, you didn't do enough pre-planning. Like, that's as simple as I could say it. Yep. Like, there should be no questions while you're trading. Guys, all those questions should be answered before you even put the fantasy order out or, or slam the bid so to get in. You know, there are times where shit fucks up because you are human. And that those are when you start when you start to start praying to fucking a god that, <laughs> that you have no business praying to, or when you start looking at filings 
that's when you know you should get the fuck out. <laughs> so it's seriously, man, you're like Jewish this week, you're Muslim this week, you're Christian this week, you're praying to all these gods that you don't, that you don't deserve, asshole. You I, 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 I do it all the time, man. <laughs> fucking, I'm in the position, and next you know, I'm looking at fucking filings from five years ago, trying to say, "Aha, uh-huh, see, <laughs> five years ago, dude, they've dumped already. Like they've already ex- exercised all the ATM. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm literally searching Twitter, you know, shit like that. I find any fucking reason to keep holding it. And the only reason why you're searching Twitter is because misery loves company, and you're like, all right, well, if I'm losing, he better be losing too. <laughs> yeah. So when that happens, guys, so what you do is you, the sooner you realize you're wrong. Start eating the loss, guys. It's better to stay in the game and just fucking hold and pray. 1,000%. Um, Jimmy, again, I've noticed um, most successful traders do not trade pre-market. Could you give your thoughts on this, please? I'm not a pre-market trader. Yes, that. Never was. Who, who said that, that? What's that about? Who said that most successful traders don't trade pre-market? Who, who, who made that rule? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's most success- It's just a <laughs> preference. You know, Dude. man, you, it doesn't matter when you trade. If, you, if that's your niche, if that is your strategy, then you do it. A yeah. Plan, plan, depending on, it doesn't matter. We just happen not to have a plan after hours. We don't have a plan holding overnight. But Dude. if you have a plan, how can you do it? <laughs> Dude, look, Bow made money in pre-market today. That was the first trade. You know what I mean? It's like, this was his first trade. That was, I don't trade pre-market. I never liked it. Because I always just knew I had so much of a comfort zone and edge in my trading just during intraday hours. But dude, that's it, it, that's up to you, man. Th- that's entirely up to you. Yep. I, I know guys who are exclusively pre-market. They make three grand a day and then bounce by the time the open hits. I'm like, you're fucking crazy. But if it works, it works. If that's your process. Mm-hmm. Whatever works for you guys. Seriously. Um, question from Ninja for Hire. I like the name. Won't hard stops have you getting out at tops and bottoms? Shouldn't you instead wait for dips and spikes to get get off it once your risk is broken? Well, the thing is, is like, I'll just answer that really quickly, Ninja. It's, dude, sometimes you will stop at the top and then it'll reverse on you. But guess what? Most times or not, more often than not, that ain't the top, bro. And that goes yeah, we, tenfold we a, we, higher. Guys, we have a video on how to properly take a stop loss. I... I posted that. It's very, very good. You need to look at that. The reason why you're getting stopped out at those places, you're a sheep, dude. You're putting at this fucking sheep level that the algos are hitting. I don't stop out at sheep levels. Yeah, and then they swipe you. So we teach that also how to mitigate that as well, guys. Stopping out at the right areas where the professionals are stopping out when they're wrong, not the sheep herd, where they swipe them and then and then it really does go your way, but they got everybody out because they saw the stop loss orders ahead of time. Whatever. I, you know, I, I don't, so let's say the stock's coming at seven dollars. I'm not gonna stop out seven oh one. The fuck are you doing? Absolutely. I'm gonna swipe, not. I'm gonna swipe you down to seven oh seven and go tank down. <laughs> <laughs> yup. So exactly. what you do is you know you gotta do like seven twelve or something like that, right? And so, and you're like, but that's way over. Well, then you're oversized. If you cannot take that extra five cent hit, that means you're sizing too big. You need to size appropriately to take, to be able not to get swiped. Very well said. Very well said. Um, How many shares do you use to make 1K a day with MIC strategies? That is a little bit of a loaded question sniper because there's so many different styles. So there's like, dude, I'll just give you an example. That's not a good question, dude. <laughs> bro, bro, we had a, we had an options trader at MIC turn $1,300 into 70,000. So first, there's no, first, first of all, there's no way to answer that. Are you talking about a hundred dollar stock a one penny stock? You know, that, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's too blanket statement. It's there's always ins and outs of every situation, but um, ideally I'll, I'll answer it like this. Uh, let me start by saying make a hundred dollars a day first, man. Yeah. And that question becomes more clear. It's like, Oh, what does it take to make a million dollars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> what does it take to get married? Well, you first got to find a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to get a Tinder account. No, the, the reason, the reason why a, a, a question like that is a little bit ill-informed sniper is because Furus have marketed exact Holy grails and exact answers, which are complete fluff bullshit for a question like that. Hey man, what does it make for me to be a millionaire? Oh, well, all you need is a $10,000 account. And this it's, it, it's too blank. It's too bold. It's too general. It's not personalized for each trader or setups that are going to get you there. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Um, what percentage of your account do you risk on a stop out? The hell? That doesn't make sense either, bro. So, so that's kind of one of, one of like another question, SH, is like what we just kind of said is it, furus have just ruined this industry for making everything an exact science. And first, of all, first of all, you're not risking your entire account. You should never risk your entire account. One, yeah, never, literally never, guys. Like, like <laughs> if you, uh, and, and I can say it like this, if, if you have $3,000 in your account and you're taking $800 losses, guys, it's just common fucking sense, man. You're going to really lose a third of your account on one trade. So like, again, it's, it's more apply a common sense that there's no exact science to anything, but it's like, I know guys who push a $3,000 account until they lose it, then bring it up to nine and then lose it, then bring it up to 15 and like, but then there's guys that grind and grind and grind slowly a lot more conservatively. But that's to be honest, to be, to be honest the, the risk is on you, man. If you, correct. Who the hell knows how much money you got in the back end? You know, you can have a, like I have a $30,000 account I traded this week with. If I lose 30 grand, you can fucking kill me, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, seriously. So it depends on you. Uh, the reason I, we put their little money in that account so that I, I, I don't one day fucking get pissed off some shit and blow millions of dollars. I used, exactly. to trade with, I used to trade with like a $4 million account, right? And I'm like, dude, nowadays I don't need to be risking fucking all that money. Some yeah, because, like that. because that question is like, what do you factor in? Hey, what percentage of your account do you risk on a stop? Well, is that the only money to your name? Do you have to pay rent with your trading account? Or are you like bow with millions in the bank and $30,000 account, if you blow it, it's not, it's going to be a splinter in the scheme of things, but it's still the whole trading account. So it's like, again, there's so much mental energy that you have to spend on questions like that. It's like, guys, if you trade with a 35K account, you should not be losing, you know, 7,000 in a day. If you have a $3,000 account, you should not be all losing part, 800 all in a day. Risk management, max daily loss, all that stuff, guys. So focus on the right things and not on these kind of like blanket questions that the answer is depends, right? Well, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the general furu stuff in the sense that we combated when we created MIC is because this is why everybody bashed us in the beginning of talking about process is once you understand process, these questions fly out the window faster than, you know, like your cigarette butt, dude. I, I'm telling you, like it, when you learn process, you actually see the common sense of this industry and not this blanket bullshit that furus tell you, this is how to get rich. This is the holy grail setup. And this is, a, you know, it, it's just this. This industry is not cut and dry, man. There's millions of loopholes, but process gets you there quicker than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> it's very hard to sometimes explain like what being a trader is, to be honest, to, to, to brainwashed questions. And I get that, dude. I was there at one point. Like, we are not singling anybody out. We're just trying to answer this as best we can. That's correct. Um, if people are giving you an exact answer, there's a good chance they're a fool. Dude, exactly. If people are giving you an exact answer to this shit, guys, I can almost guarantee that they, they actually probably don't even trade themselves and are just marketers. Like the, the thing is, is like when you've actually done this for a long time, you realize how it's actually not linear like you think it is um, in these questions. Now, process and price action can be, but to answer something like that requires so many variables, man. Yeah. There's like Travers just said, and I love this. There's no one size fits all and boom, you're rich. There's many ways to make money, skin a cat and trading. Seriously. Um, Jimmy, one of the guys that asked, asked those questions, actually, this is good. He said, sounds like, sounds like sizing is extremely important. We all want big gains. So we size in smaller accounts to try to gain faster. But when we lose, it hurts. It's hard to be patient daily, even with a 25K account. And Jimmy, you fucking nailed it, dude. You totally redeemed yourself on the second one, bro. Because yes, sizing is everything. And like we were saying, just like with golf, if you have a, it, like, like I actually hit very far in golf. So I actually don't carry too many clubs. I skip a lot of the low ones, like four or five and six. I only carry a seven iron up to driver. But, but, but you need a whole setup for different play styles, right? There's a putter, there's a chipper, there's a 49 loft wedge. There's a, you drive, like there are setups like the first red day where Alex is willing to put 50,000 shares on versus setups where he knows he's only going to get a good scalp and he'll throw 2000. That's the differentiating club for price action. So sizing is not only important, it's everything next to risk management and stock selection, but you're gonna know how to size when you really figure out stock selection because they go hand in hand. Oh, this stock trades 
30 cents in volatility versus this trade does $10 in volatility. Of course, I can't use 3,000 shares and then 3,000 shares on this one. You got to break it down, right? You got to see the different situation and perspective versus the setup that you're actually engaging in. So I could, man, we could rant on this all day, bro. But yes, sizing is very important. And everybody is so inundated with Twitter and Instagram and following trillionaire lifestyle and seeing all these young kids get rich. And it's like, dude, like everybody wants it tomorrow. Everybody wants it immediately. You want a million dollar account immediately. That just doesn't happen. In fact, these are the people that shoot themselves in the foot and get there the, the, the last you know, they're at the last in the queue, you know, pick a number, your number fucking 10,000 versus number five and six of the guy that said, look, I'm going to grind out $2,000 a day for the next three years and I'll get to a million dollars. You know what I mean? Like it, it's the guys that are patient and disciplined and actually know that this is not a get rich quick. There's nothing about trading that gets rich quick. And I'm sorry to say, but crypto add a lot of fuel to that fire of, Hey man, if I just pick the right shit coin, I'm going to be a billionaire. And then I get to retire on a beach. Welcome to reality. You got you to gotta learn something and work and put, put a real effort behind it and, and have the patience to do so. The whole reason why trading is such a blessing and a curse is the curse is, wow, there are people that do make a million dollars in a day and I could be one of those lucky people. And then the second one is- You can hey, also be a damn blizzardian, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then the second one is, hey man, maybe I could do this for the next hundred years. Let me figure out how to make a hundred dollars a day, five hundred dollars, a thousand. <laughs> Even Alex is like, dude, I was guilty of the crypto shit. When it first came out, my dumbass best friend was like, bro, you gotta get in shit coin, pig token, butt pleasure token. I got in all this bullshit. I lost like 10 G's. And obviously 10 G's doesn't bankrupt me in the slightest, but it was like, dude, I went in that FOMO period of like, hey, we got a hot new sector. I'm gonna buy fucking, you know, pig token and I'm gonna retire on a beach. It's ridiculous, dude. I'm gonna buy a first edition Charizard and then you lose half its value a month later because you got in the Logan Paul pump and dump. It's like, dude, you open your eyes, bro. <laughs> Although I cleaned up on Pokemon cards, I will say, sorry to say. I bought them tick Pokemon cards and sold at the right time. <laughs> um, what guys, any more questions? This is really good, man. This is a really good rant. <laughs> Crypto mentality got me, bro. What happened to being a billionaire last night? Todd? I, you know, man, unfortunately, bro, is a glitch in the system. And that 1.8 billion I was worth for one second felt really good. And then I realized it was all a Fugazi, man. Then I, then I had to go back to price action and hope Tesla goes up. <laughs> you, you should post that on. I did. That was right here. This is, this was my trust wallet yesterday. <laughs> 1.8 billion. <laughs> I was telling Alex, dude, I was like, you should go to bars and start showing that before they uh, change it. <laughs> dude, seriously, right? Oh my God. No, you can't withdraw. Man. It was, it was literally just a glitch, dude. Most of the coins are dead. And if they weren't, it was showing what it did to get that number is it showed every single shit coin you have at the percentage that it was currently trading at from literally zero. So think of like zero to a hundred percent. You don't have the whole hundred percent of the move. Maybe you only have 0.0001% of the move, but they look, made it sound like every coin you had, you had from starting point A to, that would be like owning Tesla at $1 versus right now. And it says you owned it at $1, you know what I mean? Versus no, I got a 900 average or an 800 average, seven. Like, it's just hysterical, man. People woke up thinking they were trillionaires, quadrillionaires, billionaires, and fuck, dude. <laughs> but for one minute in history, I was worth 1.9 billion or whatever it was. I, I text my friend, man. I said, I think this is just a joke, bro, but try to withdraw your shit. And he goes, damn, I can't, dude. And I was like, yep, sorry, man. You're not a crypto billy. If that happened to a fool, they would have used it for marketing. <laughs> See, we use it just to make ourselves look stupid, dude. Like we just clown on our own selves all day. That's what makes MIC fun, man. It's like, we don't, like you got, you can't take life too seriously, man. We're all nutless monkeys, man. Let me tell you. Guys, questions, hit us with some questions, man. We got a little time left. Now you better not be getting in BFRI trouble over there. <laughs> <laughs> I hear giggles. <laughs> oh boy. Alex, get down to stop. Any more questions? Questions, guys, questions. Who's got questions? Who's, who's been to Warwick, man? We went to Warwick, the nightclub in LA. That was my first time. That was a lot of fun. Dude, Warwick was awesome. 
not a question, but I want to make sure new members know how lucky we are to have you guys. Thanks, Simi. Dude, I, again, man, we just pass on what we know, brother. It's just we learned a lot over these years and so much of what not to do and so much of just what to do and so much psychology of it, it doesn't matter whether you're losing or you're winning, just what it means to do this for a career, man, because, you know, it takes its toll. It takes its psyche. I mean, even the Dan Bilzerian book that I was reading is, is dude, it, 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 by, by the, by current day, he doesn't even want to do poker anymore because it such, took such a toll on him. And yeah, he made a lot of money, but you know, when you risk money for a living, it does take its toll every now and then. So you also have to deal with that and realize um, what that means for you and preserving your mental sanity, not even mental capital, just sanity, man. Cause sometimes it really will throw people off the deep end. Uh, got a question on YouTube. Bao, can you drop some Dean Shu tips? Feng Shui, he said, Feng Shui, with an asterisk. Didn't mean uh, Dean Google, Shu. bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told, I, I said in the beginning, because I think I saw that question uh, a lot earlier, I said. Yeah, so we, we made, a, I did an Instagram live, you should watch that. Feng Shui is basically the energy uh, around you. It's metaphysics kind of things. It's, it's, it's basically Chinese kind of energy. And there's a whole science behind that. There are certain areas of the room that you should work and there's areas of the room that you should not work. Uh, there's also a map, a ba wa map or something you can look up that shows you where your love corner is, where your wealth, health corner, your family corner. So it doesn't hurt to try to, to I mean, it's been around for centuries, right guys? So. So it doesn't hurt to try. Bro, I'm a big believer in numerology, astrology, moon shamans, and and all that stuff, man. And I don't know too much of this, but I know there's some real power behind this. So, I mean, listen about, man. So there's power positions. There's like pussy positions. Like, like put your desk in the right area of your room, man. You don't want to get dumped on. Like, no, feng shui. We'll use, dude, we'll use every edge we can, man. I don't care how metaphysical it is. If there's an edge, there's an edge, man. Did I spell it right? Feng Shui. Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. Feng Shui. Feng Shui. Yeah, tattoo that on your arm or something. Dude, Chinese Zodiac, you know, US Zodiac, all that stuff, man. There's an edge in all of it. Learn who you are. Learn your strengths. and Inund Inundate yourself on your strengths. I love it, man. <laughs> Trying to get Alex to believe in moon shamans is a different story, though. <laughs> yeah, the map. There's a, I posted the, uh, shoot, maybe there's a Twitter. I posted the, the seating position. Yeah, you posted that somewhere, but I can't remember though. Office seating position. Maybe our WhatsApp might be in there. But actually, here, let me let me type office seating positions. I'm trying to Google this thing. Oh, uh, about I got some stuff here. I don't know if I don't know. Yeah. Does any? Oh, this one, this one. This is what you posted, right? That's a lot of them. Don't sit with. Don't sit with door behind. Don't sit in straight line at the door. Power position is sit diagonally opposing. This is what I do. Dude, I didn't even know I was doing this. Holy shit. My desk is opposing the door. I'm in a power position, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, dude. I didn't even know I was doing that without doing that. That's awesome. That makes sense, though, man. You're going to get fucking murdered. You, you, you just can't see the door. <laughs> yeah, dude, you might get bent over your own desk if you put it facing the door. <laughs> like, this is the mafia uh, map. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Oh shit. The, oh shit. This is exactly what I have, dude. That's crazy. What the hell? Oh my hey, God. I didn't even know I was doing it. And I got an L shaped bath. Well, this year, Tosh. <laughs> that must okay. be it, dude. I'm in a power position, man. Damn, man. There you go. What's my Chinese zodiac again? Like a squirrel? I think I'm like a something small. Oh no, there's a rat, right? Damn, I don't I, I gotta learn those, man. I don't know. I don't know the Chinese zodiac. I really want to learn those. But what's your Chinese zodiac? An ox. Chinese zodiac ox? <laughs> of course you'd be the freaking Wall Street bull, dude. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> of course Val was the Wall Street bull. Dude, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that Are funny. you kidding me right now? <laughs> funny, man. That's crazy, man. I think I'm the horse. Alex, what are you? No, I'm going to keep riding you, bro. <laughs> 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 <You're barren. laughs> oh shit i thought you were the cock <laughs> <laughs> no i can be <laughs> i can be a dick that, that, that's that's what it is man it's called the cock oh 1990 know. holy shit i am the horse i was right okay yeah yeah two four to yep i'm 1990 
You're the, you're the cock. That's a real thing. <laughs> the year the cock. Yeah, they call it the cock. I don't know why they call it. They don't call it the chicken though, because the cock is in now. I'm scared to Google this. I feel like it's gonna go directly to porn on Chinese zodiac cock. Year of the cock. <laughs> oh gee. <laughs> year of. The... Yeah, I just see year of the cat, dude. This is some this is some clickbait shit, bro. I don't want to go to porn up. Just look up Chinese zodiac animals, and you can see all the animals. There, look at one of those animals things. You can see those. You oh, have to look up the most complicated one, Tosh. Go Dragon, <laughs> rat, yeah. rabbit, pig. Oh, there's a pig, dude. There's a rat, goat, ox, dragon. Uh, what else? Oh, I guess they didn't show all of them. Shit. There's 12 of them. But the pig, the, the pig, ironically, golden pig is the most f wealthiest sign. Like, that's that's the sign the that, they, that, uh, that um. Asians want to be born in the golden pig. Really? And we oh, should... wow. Is that why you always had golden pigs on your desk in like the. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so snake. Not, not for trading, but it's for. Rat, uh, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, pig, dog, rooster, monkey, goat, and horse. Yep. Cool, man. I'm into it. I'll have to do some research. Yes. This is a variant of your astrology, this one. I gotta believe. I, I kind of believe this better than the uh, fucking. <laughs> Jay's like, I'm a pig. I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> yeah, but there's different kind of pigs. Oh, Jay, your pig <laughs> hasn't kicked in yet, brother. I'm not a standard mud pig. <laughs> <laughs> there's the golden pig and the mud pig. Alex is a dog. What's the, here? Let's see. What's I'm the Let's read the character of a dog. Hold on. Chinese zodiac dog characteristics. Let's see what Alex is. Oh, it's pretty accurate, man. Dogs, auspicious gifts, or unconditional love and loyalty to all living things. Dude, seriously, lo Alex is literally the most loyal person I've ever met in my entire life, dude. Dog, dog gives the world with cur courage and warm generosity of spirit. I agree with that. Um, attentive, well-meaning, helpful, warm-hearted, modest, devoted, philosophical, dutiful, discreet, intelligent, enthusiastic, cynical, ethical, neighborly, just, social, perfectionist. For sure, that's Alex. Uh, loner, innocent. Dude, I'd say that's pretty close to Alex, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Yep, there you go, bro. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what's the ox? Read the oh, horse, read the horse. Wait, can I read the ox? <laughs> no, let's see. Ox gives the world a superhuman strength of mind, body, and spirit. Totally. Quiet, methodical, stubborn, stubborn, calm, serious, strong, reliable, opinionated, <laughs> introverted dude. A lot of this is true, man. Patient, hardworking, honest, stubborn. Because yep, let's see what that damn horse is. All right, what the hell am I? Horses' auspicious gifts are freedom of spirit and fearless approach to life. Love it, dude. I gave a whole rant on fear earlier. That's crazy. Horses give to the world with true freedom of mind, body, and spirit. Freedom is the most important thing to me in life over money. Productive, enthusiastic, amusing, sexy. Oh, baby. Warm-hearted, talented, agreeable, industrious, generous, sociable, ethical, strong-minded, uh, curious, persuasive, persuasive, logical, free-spirited, independent. Dude, I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> We're reading Chinese zodiacs on this one. This is awesome. Holy shit, Alex, dude, that's crazy. That has, to, dude. That that's like where I'm like, is are things fate with zero coincidences in this world, man? That's that's insane. No, what what else, man? Dang, this is really cool, man. What else? So check that out, guys. I I think that's you know, it's just something to think about. I believe in this kind of stuff. I do too, man. It doesn't hurt, right? So uh the, there there are energy forces around you that you can't really explain. So that's what the feng, feng shui thing is. Wait, no, I just for shits and giggles. What's the rat, man? That just sounds funny. Dazzling charm and a shrewd business mind. Rat is very smart. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. So it's not what what we think of as a rat. Yeah, I get. I guess you can't go to like like normal logic on something like this. Although that'd be funny if like there was a sheep. I'd be like, dude, I'm a fucking sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, oh damn, dude. You gotta go back in and cook a little longer to avoid being a sheep. I'm a pig. <laughs> we got another pig. Who's, who are pigs, guys? Look up your dates. Who are pigs? <laughs> you bunch of pigs. 
<laughs> Horses must just want to laugh all day, dude. It's all I want to do is just laugh all day. <laughs> oh, there's a sheep that's listed as a ram. Yeah, but those are different. Rams, rams, ram is like the goat, right? These guys scale mountains and do their own thing. They're independent. <laughs> what the hell? Fuck, I'm such a snake. It's real. That's funny, dude. This is fun, man. We could have given a whole webinar just on this. There are people that you pay to do this stuff too, so. Yeah. I got a tarot reading once, and boy, she looked down at the table, and 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 I didn't know what she was looking at, and she was like, it's all good. And I said, well, that's all I need to know. See ya. Were you wearing pants? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. Dude, that was like a couple years ago. So, any questions? We can end this early and I can go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need some lunch, man. Guys, last questions. Get your questions out right here. Let me just do a cleaning house really quick. Um, number one, if you kind of just tuned in this really fun, <laughs> unique webinar, um, we have two things I want you to really pay attention to right now. Um, myinvestingclub.co, guys, is arguably the best webinar Alex has ever made. We've done it in four years. It is not.com, it is myinvestingclub.co. Please. If you are not a member and have questions about what it is like to sign up for this wonderful club, this is going to answer all those questions. And then on top of that, you are going to be able to get any of your personal questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We could schedule a call. I could text you. We can email, whatever it is. And these are all our forms of communication. So just please don't be shy, man. Reach out. There's no dumb questions. I promise you I'm not going to judge you if you just want to know about pricing, what BWAP is, literally anything. We're here to help, guys. It's, this is You don't understand that this is truly our passion. Like, Every single day, all I want to do is talk stocks, investments, and get people started in MIC because this is, the, this is the place where people get that freedom and get to learn a new language, man, a new language. It's like when people ask, what's your love language? You know, physical touch or words of affirmation. I'm like, price action, bitch. Like, that's all I want. That's my love language, making money. <laughs> we need gifts and physical attention. <laughs> Just give me candles. So... We, we just have fun, man. We, we try to teach the best we can, man, while having a fun kind of persona, guys, because I'm telling you right now, man, life is too short to not laugh and to not learn the right things with the right people. And that's what MIC is. So you're going to get what you need. But five more minutes. Do you guys have any questions about trading? Do you have any questions about the, the, maybe the charts that we posted, what Alex was talking about, what with the stuff and the volume or um, you know, something that Dow posted, like anything? How to get Momo traders, for God's sake. Like, do you guys have questions? And I'm giving you a homework assignment, man. You sh everybody here should go read Dan Bilzerian's The Setup because it's going to show you uh, the w like someone who lives a life that's fearless and how you can take that in your own life. And that's the message. Whether you respect the guy or not, it's just a really good message. Although it's hard to get the book. Apparently, you can only like get it on his website because he's self-publishing. So it's like $40 book, too. I was like, damn. Gotta fund those, gotta fund those Ignite cruises, bro. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you have no more questions, man, I think it's Val's nap time and I think it's my lunch time. What do you think? <laughs> we'll see you back in the room, guys. Hey, yep. hey, well, let's talk about um because I think there's no there's, we have a holiday sale, guys. Uh we just hit up Tosh. Alex, do we have any holiday sale? <laughs> Alex goes, shh. <laughs> Uh, we because we got rid of the monthly and I want to do something special for anybody that's watching this. So if you show up on Wednesdays, you know, we're gonna give you a great deal. So hit up Tosh, right? The best thing is just hit up Tosh. Yeah, guys, and, and everything really is case to case basis because we are not those assholes that are like, hey, a guy signed up a week ago in annual and he wants to go lifetime. I'm not gonna charge him full price for lifetime, right? Because dude, he signed up. I, I, I think we do this, man. A, whatever list of prices given half off, which is <laughs> Which is pretty good. So, about half off? Did you just say you want it fifty percent off? Okay. No. All right. All right. So for the first, uh, what what's the secret code? We'll say fearless. Fearless is secret code, guys. If you want to be fearless today, I will literally give you fifty percent off either annual or lifetime, but it's five only, because um, this is kind of random and Black Friday ish, which we don't usually do. So, uh, just text my two one three number that um, four five eight five nine nine seven. Uh, just text that and uh, and we'll get you a deal if you're listening in or been waiting to join and uh, it's your lucky day. You're the pig, man. You're the golden pig, baby. Oh, see you guys. See you, Bell. See you, buddy. See you, Alex. See you guys. Back in MIC main room. Back in after hours, man.
After hours, I'm going after hours. See ya. <laughs> See ya.